Greetings, and welcome back to making a Minecraft adventure map. We're back in Adam already, because we're going to be programming today. So I went ahead and moved the time object that we created last, ep last even episode, and I moved it to its own file so we don't have to look at it anymore. We can keep the main file more concise. That's good. We only need two, two lines for that. Of course, now we have to look into this libraries folder, but that's okay. That just makes it easier for us to organize. So let's look at the instructions.json. We're going to be modeling a couple different guns. So instead of having the names of them, let's have, or the styles of them like this, let's have it be more like this. So uh, let's go with, there we go, a laser pistol, just something super generic. And then we can model what is actually in the laser pistol. So we're going to need, we're going to need an ammo. So how much ammo the gun has. Let's make it pretty low for the time being. Uh, a fire rate. And this will probably be in ticks, so 10 ticks or half a second between shots. Then we have spread, and I want that to be pretty low in the pistol because uh, spread, you don't want it to be all over the place. Then next we want fall off. Uh, let's stall, fall off start. So what this means is when a bullet is traveling, it's the distance it takes before damage starts being decreased on that bullet. So the further it is, the less damage it'll do. So let's say you're here and there's a enemy here, but he's 50 blocks away and the fall off is 20, fall off start is 25. So it'll travel 25 blocks before the damage starts being decreased. If he's within 25 blocks, then it'll take the full amount. So 25 seems fair. Uh, the reason it's more applicable in like sniper rifles and uh, like shotguns, but pistols, it works pretty well too. Then we just have fall off rate and this is the damage it decreases per tick so but if it has 100 damage then after 25 blocks it'll start decreasing by one damage per block and eventually it'll reach zero and then we just kill the entity because why keep an entity that's not going to do any damage or a bullet that's not going to do any damage okay then we have shot count so most cases this will be one but some guns might have two shots or two bullets i guess let's call it proj count or projectile count like a shotgun would have a high number of these but most weapons only gonna have one then we do the really fun one projectile and this isn't just gonna be a name something it's actually going to be its own object so now we can describe what the projectile is so maybe something like particle uh, let's just do something I'm familiar with mycelium Travel speed is an interesting one, so if you've got a projectile that has a very fast travel speed, it'll travel almost instantly, but if it's very low, then it travels very slowly, so like a rocket launcher would have a lower travel speed. Uh, we're going to make a special case that zero, zero is actually going to be instant, so it takes zero ticks to travel to where it's at, or better yet, it's just a special case. Most of the time, we'll probably use zero for a lot of these. Here's an obvious one that I couldn't think of, and actually I put it up here. Um, damage of course and that'll be a number two so let's start with 10 damage because we don't want the pistol to be too crazy powerful medium tier enemies i think will be have 100 health lower tier enemies maybe 25 to 50 health so this should be able to kill if you get three hits now here's an interesting one we could do a hit sound so what it sounds like whoops what it sounds like when it hits uh right now we'll leave that null or empty uh just so we don't put in code that we don't really want it to and then that reminds me we can actually add sounds up here uh, so fire sound and then also a reload sound these are all super useful to have dynamic so that you don't have to change them later other than that this is a pretty good model we can always add stuff later which is nice so if we run into something like maybe we'll, we want a, a bullet to arc downwards we can add that I'm not gonna add it here yet because we'll have to see how it's implemented later but this is just the modeling. We always can go back to the model and add stuff to it or remove stuff. So maybe we don't need spread and we have something built in that determines the spread. Um, I know we'll keep spread, but sometimes things can change, which is nice. So now if we run this generator, we can actually see everything here. So this is basically a copy of this, right? And object we can see here is actually the projectile, all of this in here. So JavaScript, when it reads an object, it doesn't read every object within the object, it rather reads 
the whole object, and if it, there's an object inside of the object, then it just says, hey, there's an object there. I'm not going to spend all of that time reading that. We can also see that the reading instructions took a lot longer, or th like three milliseconds, which is next to nothing, but keep that in mind that the bigger this file gets, the more intense it's going to take. So actually, we can demonstrate that by actually copying this whole thing and pasting it. And let's say we want a plasma pistol now with a higher ammo. That's the only thing that's going to change. This is just demonstration. We can always change it later. Uh, let's go ahead and run that again. And now, ironically enough, it took less time. So let's. So something must have happened the first time. Uh, that's not usually going to be the case. The more you add to it, it's going to be more and more. I think it's kind of funny that it took less time, but let's let's not count on that. That the more we add to this, the shorter it'll, it'll get in terms of execution time. So we've got all of that. So next we're going to look at a previously created data pack that we're actually going to port over and modify just a little bit to our needs. So here is the folder for it. And if I drop that down, we can see all of this. This is my, this is actually imported from my data pack from a video I made a while back. Uh, you can look for that if you are more interested in it. We can see some interesting functions here. Uh, this is all on Raycast. Minecraft doesn't really have anything. These are just default ones to load in. So we're going to ignore that. And first thing we want to do is create a folder within this. So add folder. And we want the name of this folder to be, I usually call it generated. And that's where we put the whole data pack that's been generated. Okay, great. So now we want to copy these files over from here into not generated. We want to create a new folder. I'm going to call them static. We can always change the name of these, of course, but I'm calling them static because these are going to be files that don't change. For now, I'm actually going to just copy and paste them inside of here. Perfect. And now we can just remove this project folder. Great. Uh, we can see what is what a data pack looks like, the structure of it. So armor stand casting, here's the data. Here's the pack.mc meta. Uh, we can actually change this because no matter what we generate with the generator, we want the description of the data pack to be the same. And let's name that uh, guns for gravity two. By the way, this is gravity two we're working on if I haven't spilled that yet. And then we're going to rename this to gun engine. So this is the engine that runs the guns. This is the whole data pack. And now we can close out of pack.mc meta. We're not going to be working on working inside of that ever again, probably. And basically right now we just want to see if we can copy every folder inside of gun engine into Raycasting Blaster Generator. So ideally we do that before we start reading the instructions because no matter what the instructions say, this is going to be the same. So we're going to use FS or file system and we're going to do FS dot read file sync. So we're going to read that and then we're going to actually write, we're going to read from one and write to the other. So basically just copy. There's probably a copy directory sync, but this is just a proof of concept right now. I'm going to definitely optimize this later. Uh, and we want to paste that into generated and then probably keep the name. Uh, I want to see if this works. So I, I'm almost certain that this will not work. We don't need that anymore. Yeah, so it's like, uh, this isn't, okay. So it's, it's not really knowing what's going on. So actually, in fact, I created a library to copy all of the files from one folder to another, including the subfolders and subfiles. So rather than having to fumble through all of this again, I'm actually going to port that over. So give me a second to do that. Okay, so I've got this folder created, and this is a neat little library that instead of creating each folder and file one at a time, it's actually going to be creating whole directories and whole copying whole files over, which is going to work pretty well. So we want to use copy file sync files sync. Um, first, we need to import this over. So we're not going to use time or edit time. Um, I usually just put this right below here. So I just called it AFS for advanced file system. It's not a very good naming convention, but at the same time, I don't really care that much. And I could still optimize the folder. So it creates test and it's an fs.statsync. So it reads the stats of the item. So this is what you want to copy from here to here. So what you want to copy is that called item. I'm not very good at naming stuff, but as long as you know what you're naming. Uh, and final item is it creates, if it's a directory, it pops the last item. And then it says, hey, is this a file? If it's true, then just go ahead and copy it. Else try to try to try to create it and then 
it actually is recursive. You can figure that out on your own. That's it's one I wrote a while back, and honestly, I can't remember even how it works. I can figure it out, of course, but um, so now instead of having this, we just do afs dot. I believe it was copy file sync. So let's go ahead and copy this, and then we just do from one destination. So dot slash static slash gun engine to dot slash generated slash I guess gun engine we'll see if that works okay so it appears that one of the directories doesn't exist so one of these directories is like not sure what's going on I use that interesting I should probably use that I like those color colorful things I'm gonna put that in time too just so we know that it's loaded correctly if we install it in other places so something we're doing here isn't working so I'm not gonna actually use gun engine there or no I'm not going to use it here. I'm going to just leave, put it in generated. Maybe that'll work. Uh, close out of that and rerun it. So it's still having issues. We can actually see that gun engine is being written or was written before. We better delete that. Maybe I'm using the wrong uh, file system. Let's try that. There we go. I just had a slash in the wrong place. So now there's no error messages and it took quite a bit of runtime to move all of those, but that's okay. Now we can look at here and see that everything that was in the previous folder actually got moved. So everything from a static gun engine is now in the generated gun engine. And that's going to be pretty useful for later. But before we look at too many Minecraft commands and really dig into non-JavaScript, uh, we're going to have to end it because this is getting a very long episode. So I hope you enjoyed it and we're going to keep working on this concept in the next episode. Thanks for watching.